a chef with Ryan. Every single Tuesday, we have our extra special corner, Yes Chef, with our global chef, Ryan, a very talented, handsome young man coming into the studio to talk about seasonal ingredients, seasonal recipes from Korea. Today, it is gongchi or Pacific Sauri. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Peter. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. You got the shirt and jumper combo. We call that a jumper in the UK, the knitted thing. That ain't a jumper. It's a sweater, man. Yeah, Come on. whatever. Sweaters are like sports gear that we call in the UK anyway. Uh, I love it. I'm it's, wearing a shirt as well with a cardigan. Cashmere. Here, touch oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom just bought me some cashmere. That's really nice mm. and soft. Yeah, it's yeah. so warm, isn't it? Oh, boy. You yeah, need that. On a day like today, God. It's freezing. For a week like this week. Any farm work in this freezing weather? No way. Yeah. Uh, the rooftop, I've got to get everything into the greenhouse and covered and everything to keep the keep the microbial organisms alive in the soil. What about but, the farm uh, then? Do you just let it freeze and everything dies? Oh, not everything. Some things uh -huh. are buried, like asparagus is, uh, you know, come back. I sure hope it does. Oh, really? Um, asparagus is supposed to come back in the in the spring. Uh -huh. um, some of the herbs we've covered, let's see, we've got some carrots and beets covered with, with uh, like little mini greenhouses. Yeah. They're oh, still going. Nice. Yeah, it's okay. working. Yeah. Cool. It is really cold. I think it got down to minus 20 in some places last night. I I, I left my water running all night, just a little drip, because oh, sometimes sometimes the pipes will freeze when it gets below like really? minus 10 or That's so. That's a good yeah. tip, isn't it? Especially for yeah. uh, places where they have outer walls like right, that are right. exposed to this cold, cold weather. Yeah. And that's why we're talking maybe about today's ingredient, you right? you got to have cold weather to get this food, at least this one. Yeah. Um, these are, you know, down in Pohang, where mm -hmm. it's uh, got the windy... Um, the coastal sea air yeah. coming across, and and these this fish right here, or also herring sometimes is used, uh -huh. um, are hung up outside on like there's this one peninsula that gets tons of wind. There's another spot, um, and about eighty or ninety percent of the guamegi or the cured one um, comes from that area, from around Poang. Right, they get they hang these up outside, yeah, and at night it gets below like minus ten Celsius, <laughs> yeah. And and when it freezes, you know, water expands, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it expands out, and then uh, in the daytime, the temperature goes back up and it contracts. And after a few days, you wind up with this really interesting texture. There's no salt. It's, it's so bizarre to me. The first time I had this, because I was like, it should have salt on it. How can it be cured without salt? But uh, no, it's cured with the sea air and the temperature. Is that similar to what we did a couple of weeks ago? The, uh, what was it, Huangte? Right, yeah, yeah. It is similar in, in some ways. But, but this fish is so oily, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Um, herring and, and the specific sari or... Um, Mac, uh, pike mackerel or um, gongchi. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're so oily. I mean, it's really, really good for you. Um, and that's why it cures a little bit differently. Yeah, like the texture is completely different. We had, what was it called? The mock. Mok -te, Mok -te. Mok -te. which was the super yeah. dry version right. of the uh, Pollock. Yeah. And I don't think this would get to that texture. It would take a lot of like hardcore drying. Right. Well, those get dried for a lot longer. Uh -huh. uh, but but even then, I, you're right, I don't think this would ever get that way because it's so so nice and, and a little more dense and oily. Okay. Really, really good. It, it does taste yeah. good. It took me a little while to get used to this cured version, the right. Kwamegi. Yeah. Um, so like you said, it used to be made with herring, now mm -hmm. made with gong Mm -hmm. uh, famous in Poang, which recently had the earthquakes. Our former producer, Hyuna oh, Pidinim, right. yeah, used to sometimes yeah, yeah. bring a box in as well from Pohang. Yeah, from, that's uh, right. Yeah. A local version. Uh, so that's the cured version. The regular version over there, the Pacific Sari pike mackerel. Yeah, it's really common to get a, a lot of different fish here, especially like mackerel, pike mm -hmm. mackerel, uh, samchi or Spanish mackerel. Yeah. Um, as sogum gui, which is like salt grilled. Is that what you've done there? Well, actually, I, I did these in the oven, but essentially the same kind of thing you know with the top heat and bottom heat yeah and a little bit of salt over you don't even gut them they're just going right whole yeah uh, even with the heads and everything yeah, right yeah 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 uh, my wife hates it when we buy the fish with heads on because she doesn't like having to cut them off but with the uh, gongchi you can just leave them on and just pick and pick at them like that right yeah yeah and then and then my dog gets to eat the heads and the tails oh nice yeah, does, yeah. The, does he like fish she, heads and tails she will just sit and wait wait because she knows if i'm because seriously you can't buy just one of these yeah. uh, i had to buy at least five yesterday and they're they're super cheap i think it was like 
40 cents each or so. 40 cents? Yeah. You've got a great supplier. At the supermarket, they're still cheap, but not that cheap. Oh, those big fish markets are my favorite places. Man. That's amazing. Um, they're, they're really good. They're, now, the the nejang or the like innards of them, mm-hmm. they're kind of strong. They're kind of pungent, and it almost has kind of a like an iodide taste to it or something. Do you go for that as well? You eat the innards I, as I well? I usually don't. I let Canela, my no. dog, uh, munch on those. No, I don't um, like the innards either. Like the yeah. brown meat and the white meat in there. It tastes great. Right. But then I leave everything else. And there's so many bones in these, but you can eat them, right? I don't, they don't really bother me anymore. No. When I first got here, I was like, really? We're going to pick through all these bones? But yeah. I mean, you just eat them. Yeah. Go on with life. Yeah. Because these ones are so thin that if you just crunch on them, they just break and disintegrate in your mouth. So it's fine. L- similar to herring. Like when you, when you pickle herring in like Swedish style, the acid in the lemon juice or vinegar, it actually dissolves those little bones. Oh, that's great. And and with sushi with this, sometimes they'll do the same kind of thing. Ah, I see. When you leave pickled. it to like ferment or pickle. Mm-hmm. Uh, fantastic. So we're going to try this in the studio. I'm sure many other countries have this, right? The, the pike mackerel, the Pacific sari. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've, I saw these in Mozambique, Africa. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just for sale on the seaside. And I was like, what's the name of that fish? And they're like, Small fish. <laughs> like, what's the name of that fish? Big fish. Wow, that's like, very technical. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, and so, like, sometimes people who don't like fish bones don't get this fish, right? Because it is full of bones and it is a bit picky. But if you can well, get past that and just munch on them, it's not. It's not a really highly prized fish around here. No, it's it's considered. Um, well, it's super nutritious. Everybody knows that it's really good for you. Uh-huh. But uh, I guess because it's cheap and so common, um, it's been kind of, you know, like a, a commoner's food for a long time, I think. Yeah, you know? they'll sometimes bring it out as a side dish just, you know, mm. for no extra mm. cost mm. and mm. stuff mm. like that. Uh, I, I do. I love fish, I've got to say. I'm a big fan of oily fish like mackerels and like these as well, the, the pike mackerel. This and mackerel do taste very different, a lot less meaty i would say this um because well you, got you know the bones. when you cook mackerel mm. in your house mm. you get this really strong smell you don't get quite as strong of a smell from these you do a little bit there's there's a unique uh gong chi nemse <laughs> or smell of it ah uh, it's it's good stuff it tastes similar to mackerel i can see why it's called pike mackerel just a bit mm. drier I'd mm-hmm. say because, you know, in the big mackerel, sometimes you get the big, like, fleshy one, and around the belly, mm. that that meat of a mackerel is so moist. Right. You know? Whereas yeah. you don't get so much of the moist meat with the gong chi, right? You're, you're talking about habits today. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or what is your habit? <laughs> bad habits or good habits or... Any. I like to eat with my hands. Really? Yeah, especially if I'm in the kitchen alone. You know, These fish? Like, well, anything, really. Uh-huh. That, after, after traveling around India... Um, they eat a lot with their hands, right? Absolutely. And I just got really used to it. And and it's so much better to it eat It is the hands. easiest way to eat, isn't it? Well. Because you're not using utensils. Wash your hands and eat with your hands. It's great. It is true. And then you get to like feel the textures, you know? Uh-huh. You get closer to the food. Yeah. And the good thing about this is you, you do get a few bones, but once you strip off the top layer, then the middle bone, the spine, you just pull that out. So easy. And it takes out most of the bones. There's still, like, the the lower rib bones are still all there, but uh-huh. you just have to chew through them and go on with life. It's yeah, it's fine with that. And the tip of many Korean mothers for their kids, little kids, is eat like the tail end meat, like mm-hmm. this end meat, and it has less bones, apparently. That's what they say. Well, that's what my mum used that. to say. Especially with like no. mackerels, it's easier to take out the bones and, and they get smaller as well to the end. Um, that is a tip of some mothers. Anyway, delicious. I, I would love to know in your country, listeners out there, how you prepare this. Are these similar to sardine? sardines? <laughs> Are you all right? Did you yes. get a bone in the throat there? <laughs> a little one. Um, um, no, no, not so much. I guess in some ways, I mean, sardines... Um, we get so many here, and mm-hmm. they're so fresh. It's amazing. You can make your own anchovies <laughs> yeah. really easily in Korea. I've got all my, my students started to do it now. But making anchovy um, kind of style with this would be not You okay. know, I'd like to kind of try that, actually. I would gut it. Mm-hmm. Um, the bones are a little bit bigger, so that could be a pain. But, you know, when you get these in the cans that are braised, mm-hmm. those bones are so soft. Yeah. Because they've been, like like when you get sardines in cans back in, in the West. Yeah. Um, you can just chew right through those bones. They just they just disintegrate. And I mm. have had one place where they do. I, th- I think it's a gongchi jjigae or a gongchi right. dukbegi. Jorim. Yeah, a jorim, and yeah. they'll put it 
in the little stone pot with some spicy soup and maybe some kimchi and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just munch through the bones there. They'll just cut mm -hmm. it into like pieces. It tastes really good then with a bowl of rice. So, so delicious. Um, so like that, I'm sure many people have had this, like just grilled with some salt. Uh, the guamegi is the really Korean take on this. Uh, so. Right. It's so unique, and I've never seen anything like it anywhere else in the world. We've yeah. had this before on the show, I think, last year, right? Mm -hmm. When uh, Hyuna Pidinim was on the show, and she brought a box from Pohang. From Bohang, those, yeah. Well, these came from Pohang, too, but I think those were like a special one from maybe a smaller producer. So you can buy even the ones from Pohang in Seoul, right? You can source them somehow. Oh, uh, like almost all of them are from Pohang. Uh-huh, originally. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. the usual way to eat this one is get a piece of the cured... Gongchi, the mackerel, the pipe mackerel. Dip it in this sauce. Is this chojang? That's chojang. That's vinegar, red pepper paste. Yeah. Vinegar and red pepper paste. Put it mm -hmm. in the seaweed with maybe uh, some of the. Is this the kelp? Yes, um, that's um, uh, often used like sam here as well. To get to wrap that, I'm going to put it in with the seaweed for a bit of spice. That's chojang gochu. That's a little heat. Little yeah. chili pepper yeah. and then the raw garlic as well. You got to have that. And then what you'll find at many raw fish restaurants as well as this. Yeah, those are those are scallions, but you'll also get the garlic stem sometimes. Uh -huh. I did, sorry, I didn't bring any of those today. Ah, you I might see. also get minari or like the water parsley is what it's called usually in English. It's often used in kimchi. That's a great sound. Mm, it's a great sound. It's a great taste. Isn't it? mm. It's a weird thing to have for breakfast, but uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying this right now. Definitely. I ate a bunch of this this morning before coming up. You see the cured version, Timmy. Definitely tastes a bit more fishy. It does. Like it's concentrated, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And the texture, it, the first time you eat this, you're going to be like, it's kind of a bit leathery, kind yeah. of a bit chewy. Mm, it, it takes some time. It's it, Well, it's so unique. It's it's not like anything you've really ever had before. The you, chojang, yeah. though, is a must for me to add some spice and some something to take away your mind from just eating the fishiness of that. Yeah, mm. I tried a bunch without the chojang because uh -huh. I wanted to see like just what the guamegi tastes like by itself. Um, there, You do get a fishiness. You get a lot of oil. Mm. That's the really cool thing about this food. Uh -huh. When you bite into it, let me just try one while I'm talking about this. Yes. Uh, when you bite into these guys... Um, have they still got the bones in they? they no, no, maybe just tiny little uh -huh. ones on the sides, but yep. but not the main spine bone. When you bite into these, there's this like little squirt of oil that comes out. Yeah, that that, and then that's where the fishy flavor I think comes from a lot. You like it just like that as well? There's not a lot of fishiness. No. Well, okay, maybe a little more coming. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've had I've had quite a few of these now over the years. And this one doesn't have quite as much moisture as some of the other ones. Um, I think I read somewhere that you want it to have 20% moisture level is the ideal. That's the optimum. Yeah. And this is a real kind of winter dish as well after they've been cured like that in the winter winds, right? You really do not see this at all except for winter. It's a totally seasonal item. Yeah, because you can't really store this, I suppose. It wouldn't taste the same if you put it in the freezer. You totally can. Yeah? Yeah. If you vacuum sealed it and froze it, you could keep it in the freezer. And then you just take it out and thaw it. I suppose there are restaurants that serve it year-round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there must be a few. I guess so, yeah. Well, now with uh, the uh, ubiquity of ingredients around the year. Uh, this is what we're talking about today is the mm -hmm. pike mackerel. Let us know if you have this dish in your country and how you serve it as well this ingredient uh, do you just have it plain and grilled is there any kind of curing technique we'd be very interested to hear also what's in your fridge and ryan will come out with some delicious recipes you can try this is phantom featuring nabi new era or shinsege we're back for part two of Yes Chef Ryan. You have demolished one of these gong cheese. Uh, if we can get a close up of that, look at that. Apart from the head and tail, which you're saving for your dog, I'm sure. I'll eat that too. I'm not scared. The head. Sure. The whole head. Sure. Really? Before living in Korea, no, maybe not. But, you know, there's a lot of good flavor in there. Is it not the, really sh I mean, these look sharp just at the tail end, uh, the head end, I I've should never, say. I've them. never tried to eat one before. Are you going to um, Are you gonna do that for our listeners? Yeah, sure. That would be lovely for them fair. to see I this. To, I get to eat with my hands. So, too, you great. know, in Korea, we were saying fish for breakfast. Wow, Ryan, that's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> we were saying that fish for breakfast is quite unusual. Uh, take a look at Video Radio, if you don't. Mm -hmm. it, the taste is mm, so-so. Well, you do get that kind of chemical flavor from the innards there. Oh, but it's not a bad. lot of oil. 
a lot of oil in the good. head. Uh, like some people, my father-in-law often says the fish eyes are like prized to eat. Like they'll take them out and eat them, and there's a little hard ball in there as well mm-hmm. sometimes. Actually, what is that that's about? really good. The I'm eye. not giving those to my dog anymore. They're mine. The eyes? Seriously? <laughs> the whole head is really good. Oh, really? Is it not really hard at the end, like where the jaws are and the teeth, no? Mm-hmm. You can totally just chew through that. Wowzers, Ryan. You've, been, you've been here too long, haven't you? <laughs> You're so true, though, because in the West especially, we see that. We would not touch it with, like, a barge pole, right, the head. And when I first got here, and I remember the first Christmas, exactly, like, 10, 11 years ago, mm-hmm. I was with a friend from Mexico City, and we ordered some food, and this comes out as a side dish, and I wouldn't touch it. At all? I would not touch it. I, really? I, I took one little taste, Yeah. and I was like, something's wrong with that. <laughs> and um and I would not eat it. And How now come? here I am eating the whole thing. How come you didn't even like the flesh part of it? Well, actually, uh, okay. Actually, I was right. He wound up getting sick. Oh no! It's okay. the only time oh, that I've dear. ever heard of anyone getting sick from uh, from eating food in Korea. Actually, yeah. Um, but uh, but he did. He okay. spent all Christmas Day. Oh. On the Later toilet, sick. yeah, I can bad. imagine. Okay, <laughs> uh, so in that case, yeah, you were right not to eat it. But here in Korea, having fish for breakfast is not that unusual, right? Because you have just, traditionally speaking, the rice, the soup, the side dishes, which could include fish in the mornings, right? Yeah, and that, that really blew my mind when I first got <laughs> here too, but obviously I'm over it now. Yeah. This, I ate a bunch of the guamegi this morning for, for breakfast. breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I've got to say, with the onions, uh, sorry, with the garlic and the chili pepper as well, it goes together really well. You've got to have a bit of crunch, I feel with the uh, the kwamegi here and I've got to have the chojung as well to take a, a little bit of the edge off I suppose um, the fishy flavour and then with the chongyang gochu or the chilli peppers from chongyang tastes, tastes good I can deal with this because the texture difference makes it fun for me that's why I love having raw garlic it gives you that crunch that bit of spice as well I love the sound yeah, yeah when you're folding it up um, mm, mm, it is good really uh I say fishy, but not in a negative way. It was really good. Mm-hmm. Our camera lady is uh, getting hungry, I think, in the studio. Um, mm. I got mm. some messages to read out as well. Annie from Singapore says, I've never tried Pacific soury before. I like oily fish, and I'm curious about the texture of this fish. Can we eat this in most Korean restaurants in Korea? Thank you. Ordering it as a dish, no, right? It will just maybe come out as a side dish sometimes. Right, for the gongchi, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, um, yeah, it's not something you'd ever really order. Unless um, it's the place where I used to go for lunch when I used to work in a company. They had the gongchi chorim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's a dish when it's That's completely flavoured with spicy things and uh, tastes very different to what it tastes like there. Or kwamegi, right? You get restaurants that sell the kwamegi. Yeah, and it's actually not very cheap. Um, you go to the markets and you get it the way I did yesterday and you can get a ton for like 15 bucks. Really? Like about a kilo. Oh, wow. Minutes. But at and, the restaurants, it's quite a speciality, right? Oh, you're only going to get probably half that weight, mm-hmm. and it'll cost about 40 maybe. But then wow. you're getting, you know, the scallions, the the kelp, the gar- all the side dishes, everything. Along everything with it. you need to right. enjoy it, right? It's not just the fish, um, which is great. That's the great thing about Korean restaurants, right? They give you all the side dishes in for free. Siska from Indonesia says, today's fish, are you talking about mackerel? That's my favorite. I usually cook mackerel with chili and tomato, um, but pike mackerel, it's another type. Yes, it is, Siska, right? Mm-hmm. It has, a, it has a, a different flavor profile, like we were saying, similar, but a bit drier, I think, when you just grill it. Well, I always thought it was kind of cool in, in Korean language. You know, you've got samchi mm-hmm. um, and gongchi, yeah. right? Samchi is Spanish mackerel. Mm-hmm. And then these are the um, the pike mackerel. Oh, they oh, must sorry. be linked in Korean Definitely similar, you know, texture, flavor profile. The Spanish mackerel is a little bit lighter, you know. And then she, she says, I don't eat the fish heads. Uh, I usually cut them off and then put them. There is a famous fish head curry in Indonesia. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That would add a lot of flavor, wouldn't it? Uh, and then talking about mackerel, she says, do you eat it raw as well? It kind of has a more fishy taste for me. I need to cook it with spices to enjoy it. This, I'm not sure. Do you eat this raw? The pike mackerel? No, not usually. No. You will find it um, in, as sushi. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, it's it's usually been brined or pickled. Yeah, I, mm. I've had a lot of kodungo he or raw mackerel, you mm. know, at the uh, sushi places or chobap places, we mm-hmm. should say. That tastes really good. I love that when it's fresh. Um, but I've mm. never seen gongchi at a sushi place. It's out there. A it's, it's a little, yeah, it's less common, but it's out there. It's mm. got to be a bit fidgety, I suppose, to get off the bone and whatnot. As oh, yeah, and it's so soft. It, it <laughs> must be really tough to work with. They'll just flake mm. about, right? At Zana on YouTube says, I love fish. I eat it every single day. I'm so hungry whilst watching this, so I'm munching on some bread. Uh, some bread and fish. I guess you could uh, try that out together. A little fish sandwich. Yeah, when I was, uh, yeah, again, in, in Mozambique, Africa years ago, so um, we went out fishing with these with these guys on these boats with no motors and everything, and, uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, we get out there and they're they're taking fish similar to this, yeah. and they're just putting them, laying them right onto a fire of coconut husks. Oh, and then they've got this really rock hard like day old bread, uh-huh. and they just throw the fish in between the bread and <laughs> hand it to me. I'm like cool and uh you just and it had the you know the salt just naturally from the sea Mm -hmm. um i i salted these a little bit yeah but not enough to make that nice flavor all the way through Mm. it's just naturally there it's uh it's it's really cool yeah and it's nice to taste what you're actually having rather than over seasoning it true yeah don't go too heavy on the chojang yeah otherwise it just masks everything just gotta get a little bit (laughs) ryan as ever i love to see you enjoy the food you bring in it's really good it's the best advert for how tasty this stuff is so you're watching us here on hashtag daily k it is our yes chef segment we upload these videos onto youtube each and every week so you can watch them again to your heart's content. Today we've been talking about gongchi or Pacific Sauri uh, pike mackerel. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, Poang, the area that this is famous for, uh, the Kwamegi, as we said, was hit by an earthquake uh, about a month ago or sometime. Mm. And hopefully the local economy can be stimulated by people buying a lot of this. If you are checking us out on YouTube, make sure you tune in every single day, 9am KST, to hashtag DailyK on Arirang Radio. We got a few what's in your fridges, uh, Ryan, to get through today. Where do you want to start? Yes. Oh goodness, yeah. There's more. There's more <laughs> here than I thought there were. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, Siska, you've done it to me again, girl. You've got just nothing but fruit in your fridge. What am I gonna do? Okay, um, watermelon, banana, orange, carrot, red bean, beef. Okay, there's a little protein. Okay. Tomato. Um, shrikaya jam. Not familiar. Not sure exactly what shrikaya jam. It sounds great. Let me have a look. Um, broccoli, yellow tofu. Um, and let's see. Hmm. Some beef there. Well, I think I already talked to you about this. You remember when we talked about the, how the watermelon can be made to taste like tuna? Oh, you did say that. Yes. Yeah. Even like the color and it, as and well. And it really coincides with the guamegi. Uh-huh. So, Siska, I don't know if you remember. It was it was a long time ago we talked about this, I think. Yeah. But um, if you take watermelon and cut it into like um, a, a little like rectangle cube kind of thing mm-hmm. and then put it in the freezer and then take it out of the freezer and then put it back in the freezer and then take it back <laughs> out of the freezer and do this over and over and over again let it freeze let it freeze uh-huh. and then thaw and freeze and thaw and uh and somewhere in that process you know get some other flavor in there like soy uh, maybe some kind of like a, a fishy flavor to it or something like that if you've got those fish heads you can make a little stock and put mm-hmm. that with the soy and you just keep freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing and what you end up with, what these folks were able to do over in the UK at a, oh, really? at a famous restaurant, okay. um, um, they were able to kind of fool people. <laughs> they they wind up thinking they're having this amazing tuna. Wow. When really it's watermelon. That's amazing. How do so, they get the texture? Uh, that'd be really cool if you could try that out. You probably want to freeze and thaw at least, I'd say at least 10 or 15 times. Wow. It's That's a bit, a bit of work. Yeah. yeah but, <laughs> but that would be really, really cool. Um, other than that, with your fridge, that uh, jam is coconut jam, apparently. Oh, coconut really? jam. Oh, yum, yum, oh, yum, yum. Why is you got so jam? many cool ingredients down there that I haven't <laughs> tried yet? Um, with uh, you got tomato and beef. I just did a chili contest this past weekend, and I and I I didn't get first place, but I got second last year. Got third. Well next done. Year, Champion. Next year I'll get first, yeah. <laughs> um, if you've never had like American style or Texas style chili, then uh, you might want to try it. I don't um, think I have actually. 
Oh, I would have brought you some today. I've, I've got a little bit left of the winning chili, my friend. Wow, really? Yeah. Um, okay, so if you took the beef and the tomatoes and you need to find some kind of Western style chili powder, okay. um, which is usually, you know, there's there's the medium and there's the dark, and you can use both. Um, but then definitely onions. So you start with onions and then beef in there. And then just fry on, them up. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. Soften them up. You're not going to brown them. Just uh-huh. soften them. Um, garlic in there for sure. Then lots and lots of tomato. Um, and then lots and lots and lots of chili powder. And then some spicy chilies as well. Because chili powder, actually, the Western style, is not spicy. Okay. It's just a deep flavor. Right. So that kind of thing. Um uh, I, I'll be happy to share my chili recipe with you if you want to try it out. Um, but though, that's some really good winter food. You know? And then you just like fry in the beef and just cook it over the pan, like simmer it for a while and that's it? For a very long time. How for, long are we talking? Um, well, at least like four hours <gasps> wow. and then you let it cool down. Uh-huh. My, my secret ingredient, all right, you ready? I like to put heavy cream in my chili. Like oh, right wow. Towards, right towards the end. Oh, nice. And it just kind of balances everything out, kind of rounds it all out. And then and you eat it, it with what? Rich, like rich rice or bread or? Uh, well, you know, you could do, uh, my dad always used crackers. Nice. Um, but some folks like bread. Uh-huh. Um, like a sloppy joe? I tend to put avocado on there and then a bunch of cilantro wow. and maybe like a little bit of a salsa on top. Uh-huh. Um, also, some of the corn chips go really well with it. Cornbread oh, wow. is a famous one. My dad nice. would always do that one too. Yeah. So you could put any kind of starchy thing with it, basically. Well, I don't know about some that. chips. No, I'm no. I'm partial to cornbread or corn uh-huh. chips, something mm, like that. Sounds yeah. cool. I guess with the crunch, that would be a nice difference. To right, the chili. Exactly, exactly. All right, Cisco. Hope you try that out and let us have some photos. Next up. Uh, Yeah, Audrey, uh, she says this is going to be her last fridge for a while. She's going to go see her family for the holidays. So we better do a good job. Here we go. All right, monkfish, dried chorizo, parsnips, endive, potato, sweet potato, kumquats, lychees, clementines, double cream, goat cheese, grated Emmental cheese, and eggs. I love, I absolutely love monkfish. It's 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 really pricey back in the States, but over here you can get them. Yeah, the liver is amazing on monkfish. It's the foie gras of the sea. The liver. Yeah, I don't have time to really go into uh, (laughs) the how you prepare that, but there's a lot of uh, information online, and I'm happy to to help you out with that as well later. Um, What I would do with this, um, you got double cream and you got the clementines. I love doing like citrus cream sauces, and it doesn't take much citrus. Um, Like a sour cream. No, no, no. Actually, it's a warm sauce. Oh, okay. wow. Um, now, the monkfish, I might suggest that you poach it. Oh, yeah. Keep it nice and smooth yeah. and soft. Yeah, because then you can really, and if you've got a thermometer, if you have a way to sous vide things, then you can just get it to the perfect doneness. Monkfish is the lobster of the sea, or poor man's lobster. Right? Really? It does yeah. have that texture, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and I've done it deep fried. It's amazing. But what I would do is I'd take your parsnips, do a puree, and then take that dried chorizo to cut it into tiny little pieces and just get a little bit into the parsnip puree. That's going to go on the bottom of your plate. Uh-huh. And then the poached monkfish. And I normally I'd take some kind of an herb and put it into the wrap when you're going to poach it. When, yeah. I'm, when I say poach, you're going to get the tail meat off the bone because that's where all the meat is on the monkfish, uh-huh. right? There's not a whole lot else in there. Yeah. And then you're going to wrap it in plastic wrap. Before you do the plastic wrap, season it quite well, you know, uh, pepper and salt. And then if you've got some nice herbs around, like tarragon would be amazing. Wow. Um, but even like basil or, or dill as well. And then you roll that up in the parchment, or not parchment, but uh, plastic wrap. Then wrap that up in foil and then get it into simmering water, uh-huh. you know, okay. and let it and let it poach like that. Uh-huh. That'll help keep it. You know, in a tight form. Sure. I've done classes where we'll wrap it in bacon, sear it, and then poach it that oh, way. Oh, nice. Um, but you don't need the bacon. Um, you've got the chorizo and the, and the parsnips. Mm-hmm. But when that comes out, slice that, and you'll get these nice little medallions of the monkfish. Wow. And, and hopefully some herbs in there as well. And then if you take the double cream and just heat it up and then squeeze some of the clementine uh, juice into it. Mm. And then if you got just like dried basil or dried tarragon would be amazing with it. And it's just a really, really nice, it's heavy because of the cream, but it lightens it up a little bit because of the citrus. Yeah. And it goes really well. You could even drop a few little pieces of the goat cheese on top to garnish. Wow. Um, and that would all go together very, very well. If you want to richen up the parsnip puree, 
take the egg yolks and make sure the parsnip puree is not too super hot or else yeah. it'll cook them too fast. But just whisk those egg yolks in and then bring it, the heat back up. It'll be nice and rich. And it'll be super nice and rich underneath <gasps> the kind of lighter monkfish and then the kind of like medium light uh, sauce. That sounds like it deserves a Michelin star, right? That'd be pretty. Oh, I don't know about that. But Audrey's thanks, pretty good at cooking as well. She's amazing. I've seen so many cool things we've talked about here and then yeah. boom, there it is. She's the next done day. them. So please show us that. I love monkfish as well. Have Very we got time cool. to just do quickly Roz there? Yes, yes, Roz. Okay, I haven't had a chance to look at this one yet. We've got ginger chicken breast, smoked paprika, green onions, bell peppers, papaya, asparagus, and a pressure cooker. Okay. Oh, nice. Are, are you giving... I, I feel like I'm getting pushed in yes. the direction of using the pressure cooker here. Um, I wouldn't normally put any chicken into a pressure cooker um, because it's just not necessary. There's no... Uh, it cooks so so easily, so well, without uh, uh, needing to shorten up time. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Smoked paprika. Oh, that's um, nice. You know, you mentioned the ginger and the chicken right off the bat. That's just so, so good together. Ginger, chicken, onions, bell peppers, and even the papaya go so well together. Uh, that's that's really all I can think to do with this, Ross. Put it all um, together in a pan? Well, um, you know, you take your ginger and, and mince it up really well. Onions, normally you'd have some garlic as well, but that's okay if you don't. Um, and don't brown any of it. Just soften it up. Um, you know, get, you know, people often forget when, when you're working with chicken. Get it seasoned and then let it sit outside the fridge for 30 minutes at least. Really? Yeah, Before you let that it. flavor get in there. Okay, it really doesn't take that long. Yeah, but but you gotta let that flavor really get in there, get or it else absorbed. it'll just be on the outside. Sure. But once it's there, I mean, it's really it really makes a big difference. So at least thirty minutes outside the fridge with the ginger on there, salt and pepper at least. Um, you could do the paprika, but I don't know that would take away. I'm, I'm not. I don't usually do ginger and paprika together. Mm -hmm. um, I would say you know just get plenty of the minced ginger. Um, the salt and pepper on the chicken. Let it sit. If you have any citrus around, I would I would add that as well. Then soften up your onions in the pan. Um, bell peppers as well in, in, in the pan with the onions. Then make a space there in the middle and make sure you've got enough oil or, or butter or some kind of fat and then lay that. I'm assuming the chicken breast is probably um, skin off or, or boneless, mm -hmm. but lay that down um, there and get a nice sear on it. Flip it over after just a minute or two. Get another nice sear on there. And then finish it off in the oven, and oh. your chicken breast will be just so moist and delicious. Oh, that's um, the way we like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Roz, that's pretty simple, but uh, there's not a whole lot here to work it with. It sounds delicious, <laughs> Ryan, and Roz will yeah. be surely happy with that as well, staying up late mm. to listen. Uh, Ryan, thank you for coming in today. Uh, commiserations yes, finishing second, but next year you're going to be the chili king. I'm, that's it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it already. You're devoting your year to it. Great. And we'll see you again next Tuesday. Here's some rosy pee-pee. Adult child, Oren Ai. Mm, nice and